Okay, so here we go with part uh, three, the real part three. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so we are about to test the hypothesis using data from a well-designed study. So remember, whenever it says well-designed, that um, we're going to assume that our assumptions are met, okay, that it's uh, independent, that it's random, that it's less than 10% of the population, and we have at least 10 successes and 10 failures. And then we want to know which is true, all right? A small p-value would be strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Um, and this is true, okay? Uh, a small p-value, when our p-value, right, is less than alpha, then we reject um, the null hypothesis. So this is good, okay? Um, we can set a higher standard of proof by choosing alpha at 10% instead of 5%. Well, if we actually take alpha and we move it from 5% to 10%, that means the p-value actually gets bigger. And so this is going to be false, okay? That's not a higher standard. That's a lower standard, okay? In fact, we usually only use the 10% in like situations where we can't control all of the variables. And, uh, and we expect almost any effect to be worthwhile. All right, and then last, if we reduce the alpha level, we reduce the power of the test. And it turns out that alpha level and the power of a test are directly related. So as the alpha level goes down, we do reduce the power of the test. Now we're gonna talk more about this in chapter 21. But just realize that there's a direct relationship. As alpha goes up, the power goes up. As alpha goes down, the power goes down. And so that means that for number nine, uh, we have B. Okay, so now on to 10. Ooh, too far. Okay, a pharmaceutical company investigating whether drug stores are less likely than food stores to remove over-the-counter drugs from the shelves when the drugs are past the expiration date found a p-value of 2.8. All right, now remember, a p-value of 2.8 means that um, if I've got my little normal curve here, right, and let's say this is drug stores are less likely than food stores. So let's say we have food stores over here, right, that are removing their expired drugs, and then that means over here we have drug stores, right, that are removing their stores and just a little bit, you know, this sample is way over here, okay? So this means that there, there probably is a difference, right? Because the p-value is less than uh, 5%, okay? But it's a comparison. I'm comparing the drug stores to the food stores, okay? And I would expect this difference um, if the null hypothesis was true. So let's take a look. 2.8% more drug stores remove over-the-counter drugs. So it has nothing to do with the number of drug stores. We can't do that. It's a probability. It's a chance. 97.2% more drug stores remove. Okay, so again, this is talking about population, and we can't uh, use that. There is a set 97.2% chance that the drug stores remove more expired over-the-counter drugs. Now... The chance word is here, but it's not that the drug stores remove more expired. It's that there's a difference, okay, that, there, um, that there's a 2.8% chance that there's no difference. Oh, that, I, there is a 2.8% chance with this sample there is no difference, right? The no difference coming from difference from the null hypothesis. Okay, so this is this is a sentence that we're looking for. So this would be like F, and this would be what we were looking for. Now there's a 2.8% chance that drug stores remove more expired over the. Well, I just well no, right? It's not. We've, we kind of figure that drugstores are removing more expired drugs, but it's not a 2.8% chance that they are. It's a 2.8% chance that there's no difference. Okay, so it can't be this one. 
And so that leaves us with D, none of these. All right, so there's D, okay? Uh, oh, let's scroll down just a little bit more, okay? So here's 11, a population which is strongly skewed to the left. So we had one of these in uh, video number one or two, okay? But now we're skewed to the left. We want to estimate its mean, so we collect a sample, all right? So which should be true if we use a large sample rather than a small one, okay? So I'm talking about a larger n versus a smaller n, okay? And if I'm strongly skewed to the left, let's see if I can draw strongly skewed to the left, okay? So here's my strongly, and so my mean's going to be somewhere in here, all right? And now if I actually go ahead and take a large sample, well, large sample should reflect the population, so it's probably also going to be strongly skewed to the left. So the distribution of our sample data, right, the actual data that I collect in here will be more clearly skewed to the left. That's going to be true, right? The sample is going to model the population for a large n, okay? The sampling model of the sample means will be more skewed to the left. Now, this is an issue, okay, because what happens is, is if I start sampling means, okay, and here's, here's where the center of the population is, right? I'm going to get means that are here and actually here and here and here. And as I sample a bunch of means, what happens is the central limit theorem kicks in and I actually get a normal model, okay? So two is not going to be right. That, that's not happy. And then the variability of the sample means will be greater. Wait a minute, okay? So <clears throat> as my n gets larger, my variability gets larger? No, 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 no. Re <clears throat> remember, okay, for variability, you're talking about standard deviation, and with the standard deviation, the n is in the denominator, so as n gets bigger, the variability gets smaller. So this shouldn't be greater, this should be smaller. Okay, and so this one's not going to be true, and so B is the only one that fits here. Okay, and now we're going to do 12 and 13 to finish up the video, uh, which is true about a 99% confidence interval based on a given sample. <coughs> the interval contains 99% of the population. No, what we're talking about with a confidence interval, remember, is here's my normal curve. Okay, here's my P. I take a sample and I get P hat and the confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval is simply going to 99% uh, of the time contain P, right? So it has nothing to do with how much of the data or the population is there. It's just a level of confidence about having P the actual population proportion in the interval. Results from 99% of all samples will lie in this interval. Well, I'm gonna have lots and lots of samples over here that are not gonna be in the confidence interval because the confidence interval is only confident about containing P. So this one's not gonna be true. And the interval is wider than the 95% confidence interval would be. And this is totally true, okay? This is definitely gonna be true because 95% confidence means I'm going to shrink it down and have a smaller interval, right? Smaller interval. That's why I have less confidence. It's a smaller interval because I have less confidence um, that P is actually going to be inside it, all right? So that means that 3 is the only one that makes me happy, and so that's E. And then to finish up the video <coughs> uh, before we go on to part four is we have calculated a confidence interval based upon a sample size of 180. Now we want to get a better estimate of the margin of error, which is only one third as large. Now let me switch colors. I'm sorry, I don't like using the red a lot. All right, so one third is large. And so the one third is approximately 0.33. And so now a student gave me a little uh, tip here, 
Um, so because the standard deviation is where the normal shows up, okay, and it has a square root in it, what he said was if you take that and you um, square it, okay, so I'm going to square the 0.33, point, oops, <laughs> 33 uh, squared, and I hit enter. I'm going to get 0 0.1089, okay? And so, uh, what did he say? Oh, divide this sample over here, right? So you're going to get 0 0.1089, okay? And then because it's in the denominator, what you want to do is, uh, I guess he said divide anyway, right? So let's see. If we take 180 and I divide by 0 0.1089, to make the number bigger, right? I'm trying to make it bigger here. So uh, take 180 and divide by 0 0.1089 and I hit enter and I get 1652 basically. And that's pretty close to the 1620. Uh, I think it's a little bit off. Um, because of rounding okay so don't get too hung up that I got 1652 over here uh, because the difference is just going to be rounding okay so C is going to be the correct answer all right thank you for watching this real true part 3 video uh, and I look forward to reading your comments